Good morning, my name is Christina Janssen from the Scottish Gallery and I am delighted to welcome Joyce W. Cairns, the Senior Scottish Artist and President of the RSA, who's very kindly joined us here this morning. I'm just going to give a very, very brief resume of a fantastic career. Um, so Joyce is an alumni of, alumni of Robert Gordon University Gray's School of Art in Aberdeen, where she taught for 28 years and was recently awarded an honorary doctor of education. Um, Joyce was born and brought up in Edinburgh um, and she studied painting at Gray's School of Art, Aberdeen and the Royal College of Art in London. In 1976, Joyce returned to Aberdeen where she taught drawing and painting at Gray's School of Art until 2004. Post early retirement, Joyce worked on a vast body of work which culminated in War Tourist. This was exhibited for three months in 2006 at Aberdeen Art Gallery, which attracted nearly 30,000 visitors. Joyce is widely regarded as one of the leading painters of her generation, with her work represented in both uh, private and pub major public art collections across the United Kingdom and internationally. Joyce has a passionate interest in arts education and advocacy for the visual arts, which has driven her desire for uh, to support young and emerging artists through her many years of teaching and her representation within the Royal Scottish Academy of Art and Architecture. Joyce has approached the development of her work through many autobiographical themes. These are based on memory and family history woven around the backcloth of the once fishing village of Fitty in Aberdeen, where she has lived for over 35 years. Joyce, good morning and I'm going to hand over hand over to you. So I'm going to switch my camera off. Okay. And I'll let you begin and do please just tell me when you want me to move on with an image. Right. We're ready? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Good morning, everybody. Um, I hope you've got your glass of blue nun ready for this entertaining lecture. Uh, before I start, let me tell you a little bit about the RSA as an organisation which was founded in 1826. We receive no regular funding at national and local government level and rely instead on endowments, saved income, donations and bequests. Apart from presenting our annual exhibition, we run a programme of smaller individual exhibitions throughout the year. We own and support a collection of Scottish art going back to the 1780s and it is recognised as a collection of national significance to Scotland. We take pride in the support and encouragement we offer through the new contemporaries, our various awards and scholarships and residencies to artists and architects at all stages in their careers. Right, on to the rest of the thing. In Britain and the Republic of Ireland, all the Royal Academies of Art and Architecture have recently elected female presidents for the first time except for the Royal West of England Academy, who have already had several. In December 2019, the Royal Academy in London elected Rebecca Salter as president after an extraordinary 250 years of male dominance. The RSA managed this after 192 years, so really we are quite progressive. It is interesting to note that three out of the four Tate UK galleries are also run by women. Of course, it would not be on our all female watch, it would be on all our female watch that the four academies have had to shut their doors due to the worldwide pandemic, which even two world wars and the blips failed to do. Despite this anomaly, the Royal Scottish Academy has tried to continue to operate as normally as possible, holding our various committee meetings and doing business on Zoom. For the first time in our 194 year old history, the annual exhibition had to be posted online after the National Galleries of Scotland closed all the sites due to the pandemic. This sadly occurred as we were in the process of selecting the work and were about to hang the exhibitions. In most organisations, total gender equality is some way off, but in the RSA, long gone are the days when women were not considered for membership, as in the case of Amelia Peyton Hill. Um, a distinguished sculptress, her husband Octavius Hill and her two younger brothers were all elected to the Academy. Dr Tom Norm Normand, one of our eminent honorary members, recently did a fascinating blog on the patents of Dunfermline. 
He said that although Amelia's public and private commissions were legendary, it was deemed that a woman could not occupy a professional position. position. The work pictured here is of Lady Shand, which was the first female piece of sculpture gifted to the RSA collection in 1918. Interestingly, there does appear to have been some debate in the 1860s concerning the possibility of electing women as associate members, but this did not happen until 1938 when Josephine Haswell Miller uh, slide, uh, uh, was elected to the RSA as an RSA, ARSA. The first woman painter to be elected uh, uh, RSA was Anne Redpath in 1965. The RSA and other academies have in the last three decades made sincere efforts to address the issues and attitudes of the past. We were therefore troubled to read a recent editorial relating to the Modern Masters Women Artists exhibition, mistakenly intimating that they were part of an era where sexism was routine and women were regarded as models, mistresses and muses, rather than candidates for the Royal Scottish Academy. This, of course, may have been an early 19th century view reflecting attitudes of the time when women did not get the vote until 1918 and had to be over 30 and meet property qualifications to do so. It was not until 1928 that women over 21 finally achieved the same voting rights as men. The RSA, in common with all other institutions, universities, art schools and public collections, were slow to recognise female artists. <clears throat> when I was elected as an associate in 1986, there were only four RSA female members, one of them being Frances Walker, and three associates, one being Barbara Ray. So it was really still a boys club. I had not realised this and was amazed and honoured to have broken into this male domain. I remember being thrown flowers from the vases after I'd made my maiden speech at the Varnishing Day lunch, which was held um, in the library, now the Academician's Gallery. Some today might find that insulting, but I thought it was hilarious. One can get too po-faced about imagined slights. It never occurred to me at any time as a student or as an emerging artist that my gender was holding me back from any opportunity. If I failed to achieve something, I blamed myself for not having put forward the best work or the best proposal. It's funny, at my interview for the Royal College of Art in 1971, one of the tutors there asked me, um, he said, uh, do you like dancing? And I thought, mm. and I said, I said, well, it depends who with. I think that's what got me into the college at the time. I was a bit cheeky then. The RSE has gone a long way to address gender balance amongst the membership. And since 2010, out of the 37 elected, 15 have been women. It is difficult to play catch up uh, wh when until the 80s, the membership was mostly male. Each year, a decision is made by the academicians as to how many new members should be elected, which can range from one to three, rarely more than that. This year, there are five women and six men nominated, three of the women nominated by men, and two of the men nominated by women. In every decision made, artists are judged purely on the quality of their work, inclusive of gender, age and ethnicity. If one looks at all our awards and residency schemes, the statistics show that more women um, have been successful than men. Since the Kinross scholarships to Florence were instigated in 1981 for undergraduate and postgraduate students, out of the 448 awarded, 262 were women, so that's more than half. The relationship between the RSA and the Scottish art schools has been intrinsically linked as the majority of its members are graduates from the schools. For example, connections such as um, the late Ian Fleming to Cahoon and McBride, his memories, values and, and, and influences have been passed on through the ongoing teacher-student relationships that have played a big role in the RSA's history throughout successive generations. It is the only real forum for artists and architects who are decades apart. Most younger artists deal only with their peer group 
and galleries tend to have their own particular style of artists. I find the RSA family tree quite fascinating due to the migration of staff from one art school to another. Remembered values are initially passed on, but each student cohort uh, will recreate, recreate and transcribe them into their current, uh, their, um, into new ways of seeing and making, which relates to their current cult culture, life experience and technological innovations and new technological innovations. The days are long gone when academies were seen as arbiter, arbiters of national taste. They are now places where any form of thinking is encouraged and challenging works are shown where possible within the limitations impo imposed by the existing gallery spaces. The RSE has a wonderfully diverse range of artists, both male and female, and I feel uncomfortable about isolating one group from the other or offending those I couldn't, don't have time to mention. Many of the female ad academicians are uncomfortable of being singled out as a special group and avoid anything that has women in the title. The main problem with showing any artist's work just now is that you need to get copyright permission to do so and it was just not possible for me to do that for some of the artists in the academy that I would like to do. Therefore, following on from the teacher-student relationships, I've chosen to share some recollections of the women who taught me. One is Frances Walker, who is celebrating her 90th birthday this month. After graduating from Edinburgh College of Art and a stint of teaching in our beloved islands, she was appointed a member of staff at Gray School of Art in 1958, bringing in, I'm sure, at that time as the only woman in the staff, a different viewpoint to the course. As a schoolgirl, I'd seen her work in the RSA and had been fascinated by the paint surface, the clarity, and the jewel-like patches of colour in the mainly neutral interiors reflected in mirrors at that time. Miss Walker, as she was addressed in my student days, would then become a colleague and a dear friend after I joined the staff in 1976. Frances was elected to the RSE in 1970, two years after Elizabeth Blackadder. Um, slide, oh, yeah. Um, who I believe is now 92. Francis recounts the story of being told by one head of painting who shall be, remain nameless that all job applications from women were crumpled up and put in the bucket. I hope that this was not true and was being, and was being said to rile Francis. I fulfilled her dream of becoming um, a, a, the first woman president, but I'm sure in 1968, at the end of the two year general course, when I asked her if I was good enough to do painting, I was forever modest. It would never have occurred to either of us that as a giggly student, I would reach these dizzy heights, let alone be elected to the Royal Scottish Academy. Francis taught several RSAs, including Will McLean, Sandy Fraser, Alan Robb, Arthur Watson, and Kate Downey. Um, <clears throat> and the, the picture that's shown here just now is actually just, uh, you can, uh, but, beside the village where I lived in Foot D, and it's a very familiar start, a site and makes me quite nostalgic. In 1977, Francis took me to the Aberdeen Artists Annual Exhibition Private View to introduce me to society, a major event in the Aberdeen social calendar, where she introduced me to the wonderful painter Dorothy Johnson. Dorothy was in full aged black satin evening dress and wore her hair in coils around her ears like earmuffs, and she had an ear trumpet. She held court seated on a banquette in Aberdeen Art Gallery, an impressive figure from a bygone age. <clears throat> in 1968, Sylvia Wishart joined Gray's staff, initially standing in for Francis, who was away on a six month Scottish Arts Council bursary. I remember the first time she took her third year drawing, life drawing class. We were all thrilled to have a new female member of staff as we were all desperate, and so we were all desperate to impress. Having included absolutely everything I could see around the model in the studio, Sylvia studied the drawing, and in a few simple words explained about overall synchronization by switching lines on and off with a putty rubber. This was such a revelation that I've never looked back. I used to get the cattle boat from Aberdeen to Stromness and Orkney, where Sylvia would pick me up to stay in her house overlooking the sound of hoy. 
Her hospitality was legendary. Sylvia was never content to serve you one variety of drink, but several different kinds at the same time. Sylvia was a true bohemian with a relaxed view in life. Her love of George Melly, Bessie Smith and Billie Holiday um, is something that I remember warmly. Francis and Sylvia take inspiration from similar subjects, uh, but approach them from totally different viewpoints. Sylvia's work is all about place, which is Orkney. Francis is about deserted spaces where the only sheep and or penguins care to roam. Um, Francis has an incisive eye for every detail and seeks clarity and colour and line, whereas Sylvia is seeking to create mystery by fusing the external with the internal, uh, creating an ambiguous pictorial space without borders. I'm enormously privileged to have had the experience of being a student and a close friend of both these extraordinary pioneering women. <clears throat> so what's happening now in the Academy? Um, we were delighted during the lockdown when one of our very supportive patrons or offered to find money from various trusts to sponsor eight awards of 2,500 for to enable artists no more than 10 years out of education to pursue their practice and respond to the pandemic. We had 250 submissions for the award, which was a mammoth task to view. The standard was so high, another four awards were genuinely added. And we hope to exhibit all the work produced for the pandemic, a personal response to COVID-19 by the 12 artists um, selected in the RSA upstairs, in the upstairs gallery in January. This will make an exciting start to 2021 and that will be followed thereafter by the new contemporaries. We've had to reschedule most of our downstairs program until 2021 but hope with an online booking system we may be able to open the Academicians Gallery in September but of course this depends on the National Galleries of Scotland. There's a lot going on in social media and the blogs and various things put on and advertised by the RSA team. And we've recently started a series of talks from members about the practice, uh, which is initially for patrons and friends of the RSA, but will be recorded and then put out. We are also part of a Guardian, the Guardian Museum Squids quiz, and we're applauded for having a 50-50 gender balance. Sadly, I don't know where everybody gets the time to view all that's going on in the web, web-wise. I can't even make it into my studio at present because the RSA business is ongoing. As president, I'm just a passing ship, birthed briefly in the RS, at the RSA pier, but working on future projects that will add to the continuing history of the Academy. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Joyce, that's amazing. There's, there's a couple of images that, um, you're such an interesting person, Joyce, that was, that was really great. Um, really fantastic to get that clarification of, of the organisation. It, it, it's, it's immense. I mean, it's 192 years old, so much has happened. But you are a fascinating person to me this morning and you gave me a couple of images and we've gone completely past your career. Um, so if you don't mind, there's, there's the Grey School of Art photograph that you shared with us, but there's also the great images that you gave to us with you standing in front of your, your own work. Um, <coughs> and I, I thought you, could you just touch on your own work, Joyce, and tell us where you were at, at this point, um, just, um, to, just to share that with us. I know it's an immense story in itself. <coughs> yeah, well, this, this painting behind me is the Ghosts of Tunis, and this was done after I'd visited... Um, Tunisia, where my father had been with the First Army during the war, come up from Algeria and fought all the way through to Tunis. Um, so going to, you know, there was a series of postcards that he'd sent to my mother of the various gates in Tunis. And so it was interesting to go and visit these gates to see if they were still there. So basically, this is about my father um, as the ghost and the ghost of one of the um, Africa Corps and various people wandering around, plus the things that exist in Florence uh, in, in Tunisia today. Did I say Florence? <laughs> I don't remember. Um, so um, I, I, one of the things that intrigued me and horrified me were all the kind of booths along the side of the roads where you saw these dead sheep hanging up and then live ones tethered below waiting for their turn um, to be uh, 
have taken away. And so that was one of the first paintings that I did for the War Tourist Show, and it's got me dressed in the Berber costume, of which you see a lot in maybe outside Tunisia. The thing that astonished me about Tunisia was that once you were out the kind of main resorts, it was as it would have been when my father uh, was there in 1942. Right, and so I'm just going to, here's, here's you in front of the magic <coughs> gate, another, another story, another epic body, body of work. Yeah, and and these so, paint, the paintings are all very large. The last one was like um, seven foot by eight foot. This one's six foot by eight foot. I like doing working big, you know, I'm quite happy. I like to weave huge yeah. stories. And a lot of the stuff that I get, you know, will come from museums and military archives and, and et cetera. So this, again, the, the war affected our family immensely and, you know, it's caused various upsets through the generations to come. It was a, a difficult time for my mother. And I think, you know, my father coming back from the war, it was a hard time for him also. Um, so these are just about memories with, of um, intermixed with Thitty. Yeah. You can't see the whole painting here. It was a, of a time my sister, my eldest sister had just died and she'd looked after us when my mother was in hospital for about four years. So that was a kind of very difficult time. And then um, there's a picture of me in the dress that um, was in one of my school photographs holding a doll I was given for Christmas, which I took an immediate dislike to because I was jealous of it, apparently. And on the far side, there's my younger brother and myself, and I've got a bag around my neck, um, which my eldest brother brought back from Cyprus when he was um, uh, doing his national service and he was stationed during all the troubles in the 50s. And the boat, um, you, you can't see everything here. The boat is a boat we were with my another brother uh, rowing it on the a pond at Moffat and I was terrified of the water and behind my head was my sister holding me as a little child and then just various there's various other things in the painting down the bottom there's all the artifacts that I've I keep and collect you know from uh, cards I've sent to my mother that you know when she died that she'd kept in um in a box and um, so various things like that sweets of the time anything that's to do with the period of time that I'm painting, but they're, they're kind of time-based in that you, you go from the past to the present, and that's what the war tourist was about. You know, I didn't experience, I wasn't in the war, so basically I'm recreating, I'm re, re, you know, maybe taking things back from museums and bringing them back into the present day, into, the, into a battlefield, which I wasn't at, but they're not about battles. They're no. actually memorials to the past. All these paintings are memorials to the suffering that people had in, in that time. Well, that, that's, also, yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. And you touched on the painting schools of Scotland, which for us is, is incredible. <laughs> it's incredibly important, the painting schools of Scotland and, and the individuals who teach there, like yourself, you, you can always work out, usually without even um, you, you know immediately where students come from. So I'm going to transport you back in time to your photograph uh, that you gave to us from Grays in the 1980s. Oh, yeah. um, because as, as you say, I mean, these, this is, uh, you know, you have influenced gener generations of, of painters. And um, I thought, well, you're, you've given me this photograph so you can, you can talk through some of the memories that are, and the individuals that are in, in here, Joyce. Well, there's quite a few RSAs in here. You'll see sitting in the foreground, Sylvia Wishart, and just behind her and above her is Francis in the centre. And beside Francis is Gordon Bryce. Behind Gordon Bryce um, is, um, uh, what do you call him, Fred Stiven. And next to Fred Stiven is Bill Littlejohn, just behind that. Um, well, this is in this photograph. Uh, just thinking of academicians. Oh, Sandy Fraser's seated on the um, left-hand side, next, uh, just uh, two along. Here we go. Yeah, yes, there he is. Yep. Um, and I think that, and then I'm at the very end, just at the far end, opposite. Yes. Yeah. 
And I think, I don't know if Ian Howard was on the staff at that time, he may not, I don't know if he was there that, that which makes me think that this was quite an early photograph. And in, in pictured in it are all the technicians, the secretaries, etc. Um, Grace was really quite progressive to have three member, three female members of staff at that time. And recently, uh, it was last year, I went to Duncan of Jordanston to an opening of um, Alistair McClellan show for his, um, when he was made an honorary doctorate. And this uh, lady came up to me and she said, I just so wanted to speak to you. She said, you changed my life. I said, oh. <laughs> and she's a senior lecturer, <clears throat> sorry, at Duncan of Jordanston. And she said that I'd been asked as a visiting lecturer. And she said, it was the first time that they'd ever actually been spoken to by a female member, a female artist. There'd been nobody through the college that they had met. And I think I must have said stuff about her work, about being more ambitious and going up in scale. And she said it made a huge difference. So it's interesting to hear that and to know that what you said had had an effect. And given, she said it had given her the, the idea that she could actually do something in major in her life and there she was a senior lecturer so yeah i mean i had never met her i couldn't even remember her from a way back from that time yeah i mean it is an astonishing range of of working artists having such a positive effect on 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 students well you've been incredibly generous uh thank you so much for your time i know that you're really busy and uh like every organisation, I know it's really challenging trying to get back open to the public. So I do wish the Royal Scottish Academy uh, every success with that. And um, I hope you manage to get back into the studio at some point. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, John. Yeah, and thank good luck you. with the show. It's, it's a fascinating um, catalogue book that uh, you sent me. I really enjoyed looking at it. Thank you. Well, thank you for being part of it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Joyce. Goodbye, Bye, everybody.